Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Robert Bullard, and I direct the Environmental Justice Resource Center at Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. And I was asked to uh, speak briefly uh, on some of the work that I've been doing over the last uh, uh, 20 years. Uh, I wrote a book in 1997 called Just Transportation, Dismantling Race and Class Barriers in Mobility. And with, in that book, we talked about addressing some of the disparities as it relates to um, what I refer to as transportation apartheid. Uh, those with cars and those uh, who don't have cars and who uh, depend on transit. And what, what uh, I tried to do over the last uh, couple of decades is to reiterate that that uh, when we look at this whole question of uh, transportation and civil rights and transportation and, and health, uh, it's important to understand that even when we look at the way that we funded uh, transportation, disproportionately funding highways, roads, um, and not funding transit, what we've done is to subsidize uh, pollution and uh, exacerbated uh, public health. And if you look at this whole question of if, in fact, we are to address a number of prob uh, uh, problems and challenges, and you've heard some of them in terms of uh, mobility, uh, access to jobs, uh, this whole question of um, livability, I think investing more in transit and uh, alternatives to driving can serve, uh, can have co-benefits in terms of improving air quality. Most of the studies will show that by investing in clean fuel vehicles, uh, particularly uh, uh, buses, uh, you can, in, fa in effect, uh, uh, have health benefits that, uh, that flow to those non-attainment areas which are heavily populated by low-income people of color, working-class people. And when you look at this whole question of um, how we subsidize um, uh, transportation and what it has uh, gotten in, us into. It's, it's uh, basically a transportation sprawl. And sprawl development has created uh, uh, automobile dependency and to a large extent has created uh, tremendous um, air, problem, air, air pollution problems, in particular as it relates to uh, ground level ozone. And when we look at investing more in uh, and infrastructure to get people out of their cars um, and to clean, efficient, affordable, accessible transit, uh, you can see health benefits. For example, in 1996, uh, during the second, uh, in two weeks in, in Atlanta, the 1996 Olympics, when you couldn't drive your car for two weeks, um, uh, we had to park our cars in the ride mark. And so uh, during that two week period of time, the uh, right, the the number of cars on the highways actually decreased you know, by 20%, and the hospitalization rate for asthma uh, decreased by 46%. There are studies showing, uh, just a study uh, came out uh, just this year, last year, uh, two uh, researchers from the University of Colorado showed that when we clean up our air, uh, uh, we can also uh, extend life expectancy. Uh, uh, at 62, uh, I know uh, by cleaning up uh, air, the average city uh, had five months of, of uh, extra uh, life. Uh, I know I want my five months. Uh, so when we talk about this whole question of emissions and air quality and, and the fact that we, are, we have uh, uh, an asthma epidemic and if you look at this whole question of, of creating uh, livable and sustainable communities uh, and how we can grow smarter at the same time, investing in transit, uh, investing in infrastructure alternatives to driving, uh, uh, we will also, there are benefits that could also extend not just to uh, criteria pollutants, but also in terms of greenhouse gases, in terms of reduction of CO2. And by the way, transportation uh, accounts for about a third of, of greenhouse gases. So when we look at this whole question of the benefits that, that could accrue from having uh, viable transit systems from New York to California and cities in between like Atlanta. And I live in a city where uh, MARTA uh, is hanging on by its fingernails. It's, it's the ninth largest transit system in the country, but it's uh, one of the only major uh, transit systems that does not see, receive one dime from the state of Georgia. 
And so we are basically $57 million in the hole right now. We just got uh, $25 million from ARC stimulus money uh, to hold us back from, from uh, really uh, drastic cuts. You know, there's a proposal to, uh, to cut one day service, uh, to stop running on Fridays. You know, what would that do if you couldn't have modern buses and trains running on Friday? People who are trans-dependent depend on, on the system, you know, you can't just decide, well, I'm not going to work on Friday. You'll get fired. So, so we're talking about uh, drastic measures that need to be uh, put in place, and this is a national uh, campaign because it's a national uh, crisis. And I think it's time for uh, when the new reauthorization uh, is put in place that we do have some transportation equity and, uh, and, and somehow move away from uh, highway robbery. Uh, and that's a book that I wrote in 2004.